welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a review on the new Make It Forever HD Skin Undetectable Longwear Foundation. I was so excited to try this out. I've been seeing it everywhere on my Instagram. The promo pictures you see, the models they use, it even shows they covering up the acne, discoloration, texture, and pores. All things we know that I struggle with. So if you guys are interested in seeing my review on this new Makeup Forever HD foundation and if it is going to cover up my hyperpigmentation, acne scars, all of the things, and if it's actually worth your money or if it's just a little bit overhyped, then just keep on watching. All right, so I already did my eyebrows. I also primed my face with the One Size Secure the Blur Primer. Still trying to run through that. I got the shade 1Y16, and it's also Y242, which I think is the shade, if I'm not mistaken, that I wore in the stick foundation. I think the packaging is really cute. Like, I love the lid. I like how it's nude, really, really cute. And then when you take it off, it's just like the classic black top, but really like the nude lid. I think it's really cute. So. I I'm interested to see how well this foundation works and if it'll look like the promo picture basically. So it is described as undetectable liquid foundation that blurs and covers in perfection for up to 24 hours, medium coverage, natural finish, it helps moisturize the skin during the 24 hour period and then also helps for radiance of complexion during that 24 hour period. I'm not wearing this for 24 hours. I wouldn't wear any foundation for 24 hours. I wore it as long as I can, but I just don't think we're gonna reach a 24 hour mark. A shake before you, so that's what I'm doing. I did one pump, and here is what it looks like. Not really liquidy, pretty solid actually, which I'm surprised. I did think it was gonna be a lot more a liquid texture. On this side, I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush. Oh, let me show you this situation first. sad but she's okay. It feels a lot lighter than I thought but I'm gonna go ahead with my Morphe E63 brush. Every time I film this. This is the side without obviously and this is the side with on the skin so definitely evened out my skin tone and I think it looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and go on the other side and let's see how much this bad boy covers so far it really does feel and look like a medium coverage foundation nothing too full coverage so obviously i'm not going to knock it because of that it's definitely kind of holding up to that claim i was going to use a sponge but it's very dirty right now so i'm just going to use my tati blendable which is a little less dirty i feel like with a sponge obviously you're going to get less coverage and it's going to be sheared out a little bit and that's just kind of the case for most foundations, even with the Juno and Co sponge. This is the side where I need a little bit more coverage anyway because of this whole situation. Also excited to see how this compares to the new NARS foundation. They sound pretty similar so far and I, I really, really <laughs> like this foundation. If you wanna see the full review in depth, I will link it up here. But they are very similar to me, but that is it on this side so you can see. Yeah, definitely both medium coverage and I do kinda of wanna layer it a little bit and just see how much coverage I can get but let me zoom you in so you can see what we have so far definitely still can see my hyperpigmentation and some of my acne scars in general but I mean I look really pretty blurred and it is covered so I'm just gonna layer on a little bit more like a smidge I actually like how it doesn't come out super super fast a little bit here and a little bit here side I'll continue using the brush I mean, it's a little buildable. I can definitely still see my marks. I can definitely still see my marks on both sides of my face. And I feel like in the pictures that they are kind of promoting, especially the girl, the model with the acne, I feel like hers is a lot more covered than mine is. I mean, it's covered. It's not like a light coverage by any means, but it looks more full on the pictures. I could be wrong. 
but how it's looking on me, you'll see them peeking through a little bit. And on this side as well, I definitely can still see them. Overall, I'm not mad at it. I don't think I'm gonna put any concealer on top of it just to see through a full test. Usually if I did want more coverage, I would go ahead and put on either my NARS concealer or I've actually been really liking this Merit concealer. I don't think I'm gonna do that today. I think I'm just gonna leave it. Yeah, that is pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and we will be right back. All right, I am back with all my makeup done and this is what we're looking like so far. I think it turned out really good and really cute. Also living for this gloss, this is Tower 28 in Pistachio. Anyway, super pretty pink color and I think it looks really nice on the lips just like on its own. Really, really good. I didn't add any extra coverage or anything. All I did was set with my Huda Beauty under eye powder and then for face powder, I set with the Laura Mercier Candlelit Glow in number two and this adds pretty much no coverage. All it does is add just like a little bit of a glow and really just sets the face. Really, really pretty, especially when I wear more medium to like coverage foundations, even full coverage looks really good, but I will look so blurred, which is incredible. I don't really see any like creasing on my nose or anything. My forehead looks pretty good. And the color I don't think is terrible. I probably could have went a little lighter, but with summer coming up, I think we'll be okay. But yeah, it actually looks really good and kind of what I was hoping for and expecting. So I am excited to see how this wears throughout the day. So it is now it's gonna be around five o'clock. So I will check in with you guys at the end of tonight and see how everything holds up. Okay, it is 11 p.m. and I've had this foundation on since five. And this is how it is looking so far. It looks really good. I feel like I still look really blurred. I don't feel like I look oily at all, which is nice. And yeah, I really like it. I haven't even blotted or anything. It is wearing very well. My blush is still on, my bronzer is still on. It looks really good so i'm gonna go ahead and take all of this off and then i'll put it back on tomorrow and we'll do a full day wear test the makeup forever foundation and i think it looks pretty good to be honest like it like it's holding really well i just put it on so it's not like it has like a ton of wear and tear on it but i like it I had to show this real quick so i do not think I've ever been this dry in my life. Maybe a couple of times it's winter, but I think the snow and snowboarding really did a number on me because my skin is all just setting with setting powder. Just look at my forehead. Like, what? Like, look at my little nose. Hatch City, a clean monster. Like, look at around here. Mm -mm. I wanted a tutorial on this look on how to look dry and patchy. This is the way to go. Jaclyn Hill Skin Tint is really giving this Makeup Forever foundation a bad rap and a bad name. It doesn't look as bad. It didn't look as bad the first time I applied it. It doesn't look as bad after. I'm 100% convinced it is my base. As a quick reminder, when this video goes up that I did apply for the Sephora Squad, the link is down here in my description. If you guys can fill out a testimonial, that would be super, super appreciated. And thank you to everyone who's already filled out a testimonial. It has warmed my little heart so much. I'm sorry I'm being so annoying about this, but in case you wanted to, the opportunity, it is down here in the link below. And I appreciate you so much. All right, we are back. It is now time to wrap up my review on the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I, how do I say it? First, I'm gonna rate it. I'm gonna give this foundation a, I'll give it a 7.5 to 8 out of 10. I did like it. I am wearing it today. I feel like I look super blurred, but yeah, I don't know if it's just, I think it could just be the state my skin is currently in right now. It, it's more matte than I thought. This is described as a natural finish. Okay, the NARS one is also described as a natural finish. So I have some thoughts about that. I think it wears really well, which is nice. Strangely enough, when my skin was a little bit more on the oily side before I went to the snow, which I think is what really did me. And I was already kind of leaning more to the dry side, but once I came back from the snow, you girls been really dry this past week and just crusty, like you'll see in another foundation review I'm doing. I got some travel breakouts that have been popping up. It's super dry, like flaky. My foundations have been clinging. It's just not a good time. When I first applied this, I felt like it looked much better when I was more oily. Now you can just really see, even today, it's like clinging on to my dry patches and I just feel like it makes me look dry. Do you see this? Get to the 
foundation should be a lot more similar to the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, which it is not. I feel like it's drier when you apply it to the skin. Like it's not as fluid for sure. Like it's a little thicker and this is a lot more fluid and I feel like a little bit more radiant. I thought they were gonna be very similar. I think <laughs> I'm gonna do an upcoming comparison video on this. Maybe I'll do it in like a TikTok form or a Reels or something. Let me know instead of like a full video, but let me just tell you for $5 less, I just wanted it to be more like the NARS foundation. Cause when I put this on, so when I was trying out another foundation, I wanted to see if it's just like, okay, is it my dry skin or is it foundation? Because yeah, I love this. This is another winner from NARS. Knock it out of the park. And when I put the NARS foundation on, I was like, oh, maybe my skin's getting better because like it's not clinging to my dry patches at all. It looks really good. I look hydrated. I look glowy. I don't look like the Sahara Desert. But with this, I look a little dry. Stage four, three and a half for clinger. This doesn't do that to me. This one does. So for $5 difference, honestly, get the NARS one instead of the Makeup Forever. Only caveat to that, I am interested to try this in the summer when it gets a lot hotter and when my skin maybe goes back to being more oily, which we'll see. I'm like, I don't know if I'm getting drier, like is my skin changing and I'm becoming more combo dry or is it just literally the combo of the winter and traveling and I, my skin's just been drier. As of now, if you were debating between these two, go with the NARS. It's not a bad foundation. Coverage isn't bad, like it's fine, it's good. It's What's really getting me is just the finish. The finish of it, even before I set it with powder, it's just a finish that makes me look drier What that the NARS and other foundations I have, like the L'Oreal Freshwear, just doesn't do to me. It's not what I expected. It's good, but I won't repurchase it again. I don't think unless, again, unless something changes with me in the summer and I like find I'm like, this is great. Can't live without it. New summer foundation, then maybe. But as of now, um, I'm definitely gonna use it up. Uh, maybe I'll give it away to a friend or family member with more oily skin right now. It's just not my fave. I'm a little disappointed because I saw some people being like, this is the best new foundation ever. Unfortunately, I don't say or share that same sentiment that this is the best foundation ever, but I don't think it's bad. That's why I'm gonna give it a seven and a half, eight, maybe more towards an eight, because like looking back, I can look back at my footage from when I first put this on. Finish looked good, like I was feeling it. I was feeling her from far away, like she looked good. So I'm hoping maybe it's just my skin situation here that is making it look very dry and crusty. Like maybe I'm just crusty. I'm the crusty problem. It could be me. Get a sample. I would suggest before buying the whole thing. Maybe this is exactly what you're looking for. And you are an oily gal like I usually am. And you're like, perfect. The NARS was way too dewy on me. Grease ball was everywhere. Try it. Maybe this could be the alternative you need. Make up forever their new loose powder. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10, amazing. Their loose powder, their HD loose powder, great. I have, I think like the banana shade. And when I tell you, no matter what foundation I wear, when I set my concealer, when I set my little pore area, my T-zone, I have never looked more blurred. Like I thought the Huda Beauty powder blurred me. No, nothing, nothing compared to this. I'm someone who never understood completely the Laura Mercier translucent powder hype. Didn't do it for me. Huda did it a little more for me, but the makeup that is my new holy grail favorite powder. I'm waiting <laughs> to use up all my Huda Beauty powder. I have, they give you so much product, which is good, but I'm trying to use it up. Pretty fair amount. And this is in the shade Pound Cake, in case you were wondering. Mostly I'm just trying to get through it because the Makeup Forever powder is literally the best thing for me to be dramatic on this planet. It's everything you need it. It's a little bit more glam, but I don't care. I think even on a natural day, she looks beautiful. And if I'm wearing makeup, I don't need to look completely natural. Like we all know I'm wearing makeup. You know it, I know it, so get this powder. It's amazing. Chef's kiss. You can get anything from Makeup Forever. That's the thing I suggest before this foundation, 100%. Have you guys tried the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation? Let me know down in the comments below. Did you think it was gonna be like face and body? Did you think it was gonna be like the NARS? I would love to know your thoughts. If you've tried it, does it make you feel drier? Do you look drier? 
powder or is it like your perfect foundation? I would love to know. And if you're interested in seeing more foundation reviews, you can click here. You can see my full review on the NARS foundation that I just recently did and also some other beauty videos. And if you're interested in some more skincare stuff, go ahead and click a video over here and I'll see you in one of these videos.